And uh, I wanted to talk a, a little bit about the way that that um, secularists use science to beat up on Christianity. And this is done all the time. And in fact, I was reading something just yesterday that uh, was related to this. Um, and uh, it, it, it seems that some people feel you have to take one side or the other. And either the side of religion or the side of science. OK, and uh, religion is for religious people and science is for reasonable, rational people who want to know the facts about the world and are not given to the fantasies of religion. That's the way it's characterized. I remember Michael Shermer, the American atheist and skeptic magazine uh, founder, who I, I debated on radio for three hours uh, on the issue of God, he in his his testimony, he talks about having believed in religion, and now he believes in science. Note the dichotomy. And to me, it's like saying, well, I, I don't believe in God anymore. I believe in Cousinarts. Well, there's no contradiction between believing in both of them. It isn't like Cousinarts now fulfill what role God himself uh, if he does exist, fulfills. There are two different realms, it seems to me, and they're not necessarily contradictory. Uh, but in any event, that was that's that's his view, and this is the way many people feel about it. There's a conflict between science and religion, particularly Christian religion. And so, if you're going to be a real scientist, you either can't be a Christian, or you got to be a Christian who keeps your God in his box on Sundays and does not bring him into the process in any way, shape, or form in, in your scientific endeavor. Instead, science has to work a different way. And science, I guess this would be maybe a bleak way of putting it, but I think it's accurate. Science must work in a godless way. God can't be involved in your science, because if God's involved in your science, and that just messes the system up. That's not science, which is precisely what you hear when you try to invoke a creator at the beginning of the process to create the universe, or along the process to create original life, or to create individual kinds of things in some way consistent with the Genesis account. Well, see, now you're not doing science anymore. You're doing religion. And what's the distinction there? The distinction is religion has God in it, and science does not. So if, if your alleged scientific musings include God, then it's not science. Now, I think I am completely convinced that this uh, conflict is contrived. I do not think that there is a, a, a native conflict between science, at least in one understanding, which I'll clarify in a moment, and religion, at least Christian religion properly understood. And indeed, though some people say that bringing God into the process, saying God did it, is a science stopper, it turns out historically to have been the science starter. That is, modern science started in Western civilization that was in possession of a very particular way of understanding how the world worked. That is, there was a God who made the world in an organized fashion, and because it was organized and followed consistent principles for the most part, and we'll call those natural laws, uh, that we could then discover those patterns that we see in nature, those uniform or largely uniform, I'm only qualifying it here because I think there can be exceptions to the uniform uh, functioning of nature according to natural laws. In any event, the, the, the point is, is that, that 
the founders of the scientific enterprise, and you could look at just about every single one of them, from Newton to Faraday to Pascal to von Leeuwenhoek to uh, who's Gregor Mendel the monk. You can look at all of these, although I'm not so sure about von Leeuwenhoek because I just grabbed that name out of the air. But most of the others, though probably him too, we're all convinced that God existed and made the world in a particular way that allowed us to discover its underlying principles and use them for our benefit and for his glory and a way to also understand God and to know him. So there, there clearly, historically, is no inherent problem between the methods of science— and here I'm choosing my words correct uh, carefully, and the and 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 a proper understanding of say Christian religion. There's no inherent contradiction there. They fit together nicely. Well, where did the conflict come? The conflict did not come from the methods of science of uh, Francis Bacon and the rest of them who kind of laid the foundation for how this all works and those who put those methods into play to learn particular things about particular disciplines of science. No, it didn't come from them. It came from somewhere else. And here I, I owe the, th this insight to uh, Darwin on Trials of Philip Johnson. Many years ago I heard him speaking, and he made a distinction here that, uh, that just— uh, allowed me to see something I didn't see before, and I hope it'll allow you to see this as well. And that is, there are two definitions of science in play here. Oh, that's called an equivocation, where one definition kind of, one use of the word drifts over into the other use of the word, and the clarity is not there, and there's confusion. One is science as a methodology. I've already made reference to that. You might call it the scientific method, though the scientific method turns out to be a constellation of things and not any one particular thing, one particular set of things. This is called the demarcation problem, if you're interested in philosophy of science. But I'll just set that aside for the moment. We all understand that there is a method that scientists practice or various aspects of a method that allow them to come to a an accurate understanding about the nature of the physical universe. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's great. But there's another definition of science that is also in play that is wedded to the methodology. And this is a metaphysical element. Now, when I say metaphysical, don't be scared away by the word. It, all I mean by the word metaphysical in this sense, in its philosophical sense, is a metaphysical view, is a view of what is real. It's a view of how the world is. It's an understanding of how reality is structured. So the metaphysical view that is now wedded to the methodology of science, they are joined at the hip and are now are almost inextricable, so that it feels like one is the other, is the metaphysical view called materialism. Now, what materialism is, isn't something that goes on at the mall. It's not a view of consumerism. It's a view of, the, of reality. And that view simply says that all that exists are material things in motion being governed by natural law. That's why materialism and naturalism and physicalism, in this sense, function as synonyms. All right? So what we have is we have a methodology and we have a philosophy. Okay? How does the philosophy of materialism affect our understanding of the methodology of science? <clears throat> it's very simple. Not only must one do the methods of science correctly, but the methods of science must produce results that are consistent with the philosophy of materialism. That is, 
everything is reduced to cause and effect in a natural system. Everything must be explained entirely by an appeal to natural processes in a materialistic universe. For all intents and purposes, the universe is closed. All we have is a dominoes falling in complicated ways, and we can observe through our methods how those dominoes fall to predict how future dominoes will fall, but it's just a big machine. And our science must produce answers that fit that metaphysical understanding of the universe. So, once again, we have two definitions of science. One that you have to do a methodology correctly. Secondly, is an understanding about how the universe is. And by the way, there is no evidence given. It is assumed to be so. It is not argued for. This is why that assumption is called an a priori. A priori is a phrase that means some point of view that one arrives at before prior to the evidence coming in. It's prior to the evidence. It's not based on the evidence. So you start with an assumption that the material world is all there is, and then you use a methodology that is designed, now wedded to that materialism, to produce explanations that are completely material. But when the evidence seems to point to an agent, and you say, huh, what kind of agent is adequate to do this? It would have to be God. People cry foul, okay? And they say that's not science. So now this raises a, an interesting question. When you do your science, do you want the right answers or do you want the right kind of answers? And in the present system, it is the latter not the former. Now, here's what happens, though, in the discussion. If you invoke God, somebody says, well, that's not science. It sounds like you're not doing good science on the methodology side, when really what's being said is you're breaking a, an artificial rule that has been placed upon the whole process on the philosophical side, a metaphysical rule that is assumed and not proven or even argue for it, it's an a priori. In other words, to put it simply, the game has been rigged, and that is the conflict between science and religion nowadays.